Does everybody remember the classic family film that they grew up with, playing Gangsta's Paradise in the background amongst eerie music with one of their favorite blue childhood characters? Because I certainly don't, and thank God, because we got a new Sonic trailer today, and it actually looks a decent bit more promising. Logan, what are your thoughts on this thing? Well, first things first, I believe that Sonic looks great now. I mean, well, maybe he doesn't, but I'm just so used to seeing this monstrosity when they would show the new Sonic movie trailers that, like, basically anything is an improvement. Absolutely, and I think that just attributes to the overall tone of this trailer as opposed to the original. Whether it's the music track change from focusing on a song like Blitzkrieg Bop with some little sprinkles of original Sonic medleys in there, like I believe Green Hill Zone had some splashes from here and there, definitely. and that type of thing, hints at an overall brighter tone, which definitely works a lot better given how the movie's supposed to be marketed towards families. The original one with Gangster's Paradise, Jim Carrey, Jim Carrying behind that, and everything else actually kind of left a bit of an eerie tone. Like, it felt very awkward for what they were going for. I suppose so, but Jim Carrey is still Jim Carrying, and he might just be carrying the film. Oh, that was too good. <laughs> but it, that's what I'm getting at, is when Jim Carrey is doing that, it's best in kind of this ridiculous, right. overly bright and obnoxious type of setting, rather than, we're going to be edgy, but we're going to have jokes going on at the same time, and we're going to make Sonic look like this mature character in this family-friendly film. Like, what are you doing? Keep your keep your audience consistent. Otherwise, you're going to try to appeal to everyone and successfully appeal to no one. Right. So, cinematically, I also think that the movie looks great. There are a lot of CGI shots in it that, uh, you know, lots of bright colors, lots of movement, lots of great animation, stuff like that. So, on a cinematic level, it definitely looks very pretty. But seeing the trailer, I'm getting deja vu from when I saw Detective Pikachu. And in a lot of ways, this seems like a discount version of that movie. That wouldn't surprise me. I mean, Detective Pikachu saw a large amount of success, especially when comparing it relatively to other video game-based movies. So yeah. I have a feeling, especially when it comes to games that are seen as more kid-friendly, I use air quotes there intentionally because obviously characters like Sonic and Pokemon, people of all ages enjoy. Regardless, characters that can be more kid-friendly at least I think movies for them going forward, at least for these next few years, are going to draw a lot of inspiration from Detective Pikachu because prior to that, what other successful video game movies did we have? I mean, I guess Tomb Raider is probably the closest thing. Hey, they had Street Fighter the movie, and then they made a game based off of that movie. And both were horrible. Yeah. <laughs> My point exactly. <laughs> so rolling right along here, I mean, Detective Pikachu's influence, I think, resonates well there. I personally haven't seen the movie yet, which is pretty sad considering I'm a huge Pokemon fan. Yeah, I'm actually fan. surprised, but I do recommend it. Yeah, so I've heard. I have a couple posters there that I got for free at GameStop, chilling at my house. Nice. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and delve a little bit into the plot here, if you're okay with that. Yeah, of course. Okay, so Sonic states on in the beginning of the trailer that he left his planet to come to ours because everybody was chasing his powers. It leaves me a bit curious about what his pa like his planet, so to speak, is like in this movie, in the lore of this movie, because the impression I was always under, now granted I have minimal experience with the Sonic games, is that most of the other characters he's friends with on his planet also have semi-equivalent powers, for example, Knuckles and Tails. Right. So I'm guessing the lore for this movie is rather different it's, it definitely is because in the original sonic games it's supposed to be dr robotnik is attacking his home planet which i believe is called morbius if i'm remembering correctly and uh, trying to encapsulate all of the wildlife into robots now that is vastly different uh well at least it seems vastly different than what is happening in the movie right now uh dr eggman is not hunting out forest creatures and shoving them inside of robots He's essentially the villain who's just trying to capture Sonic for reasons we don't actually know yet. Yeah, I have some speculation on that. I mean, overall, the gra the tone I'm kind of getting in terms of this movie's plot beats are that it's the classic story of person meets alien, person takes in alien out of sort of sympathy or pity, uh, acts and pretends to hate them to their face, and then by the end of the movie, like, the government's after them in some way, shape, or form. After all, we do see some, like, army or military-esque folk like charging in a brief clip in this video right. it's very possible robotnik's tied to them somehow in some way shape or form and then when the government catches up with person and alien person defends alien from them probably gives some speech about friendship and acceptance or nonsense like that and we all leave there with a happy good time trying to feel accepting of each other 
Now, where does that tie into Robotnik especially? Well, to what your point was, in the original plot of the games, he goes to Sonic's planet to try and capture their natural living creatures. Here, it seems like Robotnik doesn't even know what Sonic is until he arrives. He talks about Sonic as an alien. He doesn't seem familiar with the powers at all. He screamed when he first saw him. Precisely. So to me, it strikes me as Robotnik's just a typical human that's really good with science. And that's where my next guess of he probably works for the military in some way, shape, or capacity. And then we have to kind of question his motives. Is it that the entire government's against Sonic? Or is it that, you know, Robotnik's spinning the information on Sonic to give himself an excuse to use military resources to hunt him down for his own personal gain? I mean, either way, that doesn't make it different, you know, in terms of plot, really. It's just like, right, it's just a motivation yeah, question. exactly. And I think it definitely leans more towards it being selfish reasons for him, just because that's an easier antagonist to go against, whereas if it's a question of government and danger to the public, then it can be a little bit more controversial, and once more, this is a family-friendly film. Usually you want to keep things kind of happy-go-lucky and relatively straightforward. Right. So... We'll see how that turns out. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have a whole lot else to say about the plot. It seems very beat for beat. Well, one thing I did want to touch on is, like, I know this seems like it's on Quandry, but, like, how does this movie set into the plot of Sonic the Hedgehog lore as a whole? I mean, Sonic's lore is already convoluted enough, what with the previous reboots, failed plot add-ons, a slew of TV shows and comics... Like, if you thought the Zelda timeline was convoluted, show me the Sonic one. I have no idea, like, how any of the any of the games link together after, like, the third one, you know? So, like, is there a cohesive lore, or are they just, like, are they just plopping a Sega IP into, like, a kid's movie? I think it's probably the latter. Right. Uh, coming from somebody who's of the Yu-Gi-Oh! fandom, when people try to tie that timeline together, it's equally as terrible. I think Sega and Konami are both two companies that are kind of just adding things to the existence of their IP without necessarily being concerned of how it fits into this overarching story and lore. Um, as we pointed out with the planet invasion, like that makes, or not invasion, invasion in the games, him coming to Earth in the movie, those directly contradict one another. <laughs> so right. unless this is like alternate universe or alternate timeline Sonic or something. Yeah, they might try to spin it like that or something. I mean, it's already, it's happened with Star Trek. And this is know. true. It, it could be any number of things. I mean, I pretty much usually give up on trying to speculate that type of stuff just because, like, I'll point out something if it's distinctly there, just because most of the time it doesn't work out. Um, but it, it, any more thoughts on that one before I bring up the next point? Oh, yeah, go ahead, bring the next one. Okay, why are there golden rings in here? Like, I get it, it's from the game, but there's a point in the trailer where Sonic's just running and he, like, goes through the ring, and I'm pretty sure it even makes the ring sound effect. I feel like these are just going to be forced in there horribly. Don't, don't you remember the bonus levels of Sonic? That's how you'd get into them? At the end of the stage, would be like a giant ring and you jump into it. Right, I, I mean, the only purpose I can see the rings actually serving without just being shoehorned into the movie is they serve as some sort of portal. I mean, that looks like what it is. At the very end of the trailer, he, like, throws one in front of him and runs through. Right, so maybe that's what it is, but if they just have him, like, running through rings in the middle of combat, it's like, this makes me get stronger! I Where did Superman these come 64. from? Yeah, Superman <laughs> <laughs> Favorite game of all time, guys. <laughs> Favorite game of all time. Uh, and just another point in, like, the ridiculous stuff, Sp Sonic says, and I quote, here comes the boom after destroying one of Robotnik's tanks, and it just... I think it hints to me that within this movie, which I get in and of itself is just a giant pop culture reference, we may see a lot of jokes that 10, 15, 20 years down the line just feel downright cringy because they're very akin to the audience of the day. I mean, we've, there, are already some, there are already some stale jokes in that trailer. This is true. This is true. But once more, it's pro mostly targeted at a younger audience, and they usually get the jokes a little bit later. So, yippee ki yay! Yay! But yeah, that, I think that's going to conclude our thoughts on this trailer, guys. Massive improvements to whoever's working on this movie from Definitely. the previous trailer. Is it going to be a great movie? Um, I think it's going to be there. It's going to be okay. <laughs> it's not going to blow anybody's mind, and the main reason anyone's going to pay attention to it is only because of Sonic. Exactly, and Jim Carrey. Yeah, other than that, it seems to be your run-of-the-mill uh, kids movie. 
hate to say it, but it's true. I mean, and for a video game movie, that's not inherently terrible, especially some of the things we've gotten in the past. So, yeah, that's going to wrap our thoughts up on this so new Sonic trailer. Be sure to let any us know about any of your thoughts, comments, theories, etc. in the comments section down below. Hit that like button and subscribe. If not, constructive criticism is always welcome. And we'll catch you guys next time on Newbark Network.